Compared to the rest of the animal kingdom, humans are strange, hairless beasts. That is, except for our heads. The hair on our head is much different from the rest of the body. It's long, dense, and a different structure than our other hair. So why do we have this odd evolutionary trait? To answer this question, let's first talk about why the hair on our bodies is so unnoticeable. We have hair all over our bodies except for our palms and our feet. We actually even have the same density of hair on our bodies as chimps. Our body hair is generally small and unnoticeable. Even in rather hairy individuals, the hair is still small and does not provide any discernible effect. A common idea is that body hair keeps individuals warm. If we look at a map of body hair worldwide, it does not correlate well with temperature. This seems odd, but it actually makes sense. The amount of body hair we have even in the hairiest of individuals does not keep them warm. In northern environments, we still need clothing. Clothing has made the evolution of body hair basically obsolete. Maybe some of our relatives like Neanderthals were much hairier to cope with their cold environment. It is hard to tell though, and even after thousands of years in cold environments, Homo sapiens have stayed relatively hairless. Overall, our body hair is short. This is for an important reason. Around 4 million years ago, our ancestors lived in an increasingly dry environment. They were forced to leave the safety of the trees on the savanna to forage for food, find water, and seek better shelter. This is when bipedalism first evolved. On the open savanna, there were no leaves to protect them from the hot sunlight. Even a short distance would be exhausting and it would be easy to overheat. They were likely still quite hairy. Eventually the loss of this thick hair would allow us to shed heat easier. Sweat could easily roll off of our skin, carrying its heat with it. This new adaptation allowed us to be able to move long distances and have a lot of endurance. Genetic evidence suggests that we became furless around 1.7 million years ago. Around this time, our ancestor Homo erectus was living on the baking savanna, which supports the thermoregulation hypothesis. Though not all humans are still running around on the savanna anymore, sweat is still an extremely important trait for humans to have. Anhydrosis is the inability to sweat normally. When you don't sweat, your body can't cool itself, which can lead to overheating and sometimes even heat stroke. A lot of animals are capable of sweating, though in a very limited way. Dogs actually have the ability to sweat through their paws, but this hardly cools them. They mainly cool down by sitting in the shade and panting. Our unique ability to sweat so extensively allows us to be active during the hottest parts of the day when other mammals are limited to the shade. Another important benefit of hairless bodies is that it takes away the home for dangerous disease spreading parasites. Charles Darwin thought hairless bodies might have been seen as more desirable because of the anti-parasitic effects. These two reasons are good explanations for the loss of hair on our bodies. But then why don't we also lose the hair on our heads? Proposed explanations include insulating our brains from the heat or cold. Anyone who lives in the cold knows that hair does keep your head quite warm. In searing heat, hair can also insulate the brain from overheating. Since our ancestors were bipedal, in the afternoon hours, the sun would have beat down on their heads. A head of hair may have protected their scalps from harmful solar radiation and insulated them from the heat or cold. But then you may wonder why didn't we also have hair on our shoulders? No one really knows, but the answer might lie in another often overlooked factor in evolution. Sexual selection is a very powerful force that is responsible for some of the most strange features seen in the animal kingdom. It is often hard to study such structures, especially in the fossil record, because what a species finds sexually attractive is very subjective. The reason our hair remained could have been to attract mates. 
Furthermore, facial hair may aid in this theory. Extensive facial hair only appears in sexually mature males. Most men are not able to grow much facial hair until about 16, and by this age they are already sexually mature. We see in nature that animals develop certain features when they become sexually mature. Gorillas only develop their silverbacks at around the age of 14. By this time they are of age and this feature tells the other gorillas that they may be dominant enough to secure the right to produce. You cannot really make a direct comparison between humans and gorillas, but this display of maturity tells others that an individual is an adult and should be respected as a reproducing individual. Lion manes are another feature that could be compared. They are mainly for display and show how dominant an individual is. It should be noted that female lions can actually grow manes as well and take on some masculine characteristics. It is very rare though. Throughout history, hair and facial hair have been very culturally important. Men often grow large beards and women grow long and well-kept hair. The diversity in what hairstyles are favored in each culture is fascinating. In the human species, each culture and subculture has its own different customs that favor specific styles. You can imagine across the whole of human history, hair has been styled in all manners. I wonder when our ancestors first started styling their hair. We do not see chimps doing it, but their hair is rather uniform and there is not much they could do with it if they wanted. I see our hair as a wonderful facet of what makes us human, a trait that has evolved to be so flamboyant and subjective. And since I know some of you will ask, why do we have more hair in our armpits and pubic regions? So instead of showing you a bunch of pubic and armpit hair, I'm just going to be showing stock footage during this segment. What I found is that armpit hair may be to collect the scent of body odor. There's actually been research that shows women find the smell of men's body odor more attractive if they have similar immune systems. Pubic hair lessens friction and prevents the transmission of bacteria and other pathogens. Maybe I should cover other weird things about ourselves and our evolution. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then I am sure you'd like some of the other videos I have made. Before this video ends, I just wanted to add on a little cool thing I've been working on recently. I recently bought some uh, mammoth tusk to make a, a knife out of. I'm going to use it for the scales of the knife blade. So this knife is still not going to be done for quite a while, but I have the mammoth material right now and it's really cool. It's mammoth tusk, the outside of the tusk. And I got it from this guy from, I don't know if he lives there or just visits there, but he's from Alaska. And I'll link his site down below along with a video of him actually finding these mammoth tusks. They melt out of the permafrost up there and he goes out on a little boat and gets them out of the mud and takes them back and cleans them up. But he's found skulls, he's found stuff of camels, wolves, mammoths, a bunch of stuff. So I'll link him in the description below and maybe even go buy some mammoth if you want to. It's not, there's no ethical concerns with it. I mean, it's the exact same thing as elephant ivory, but obviously it's mammoth ivory. But there's uh, nothing bad ethical about it. He gets it from like land with mineral rights and... It's really cool actually, there's a huge uh, mammoth trade in Asia because uh, like ivory was big over there, but obviously we want to protect the elephants, so that trade kind of died down hopefully. And instead they just use mammoth tusks because there's millions of mammoth tusks out there and why not use them? Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to support the channel. I'll see you in the next episode of Northo 2. See ya.